Radio, how to eat the learners. Let's get that out of here. We are smacking our final exams and we're doing it by looking in detail to each question that you can expect in your final exams. And in this video, we're looking at paper one. We are in the last question four, which is your civil drawings. And I'll be showing you the memos like you've never seen it before. A deep dive into what exact marks learners keep losing because they do not know what teachers look at when marking. So give me some time. I'm going to get there in a moment. But first of all, let's look at an overview. Now you can read this on your own. I just want to highlight one or two things. You're going to be limited in your civil drawing. Question four, it's of course, going to be 90 marks. It's a massive question and it's one that you can actually really do well in. Limited to single story buildings, so no stress about a double story there. It's always going to be first angle orthographic projection. You're going to have to be able to draw detailed floor plans, detailed elevations, and a sectional elevation. That includes foundation, walls, and roof. Okay. Then, always in these drawings, of course, labels, dimensioning, scales are important. Scales, very important. I see a lot of learners struggle with scales. Relevant abbreviations, symbols, graphic symbols. All relevant views um, will need to include the roof details, the electrical fittings, and the wiring diagrams. Okay, and then etching detail at your sections, know your colors, uh, although that might more be applicable to the analytical question. And then site plans, of course, also question one. Look at that video if you missed it when I really discussed site plans. And then all of this must comply with SUNS. Okay. I'll show you uh, some of that details in a moment. And then last year, question four could be one multi-view question or it could be subdivided in more than one question. Now, in previous years, uh, it's, they refer to multi-view questions. Let's have a look at last year's question. Right here, and of course, by now you guys know that this is actually in the download description below, the link to download all of these plus the memos. Make sure you do that in preparation. And please do not just print it out Put it under your cushion or your pillow tonight and sleep on it. No, you need to actually draw it. Righty -o. Let's look at this. This is the information page that you will receive. And really, take time during that 10-minute reading time to familiarize yourself with all the different aspects of this. You'll see here, I'm not going to go into detail, but they actually give you the marks here. They show you this elevation. Although it's incomplete, it's almost 100% of the detail as well as the floor plan. There's a whole list of notes here. The electrical diagrams. If you look here, number one is a one-way switch. So there it is. Okay. Number five, ceiling light. Then you go a little bit up here and you'll actually see the symbols that, you, that you're going to use to complete this electrical diagram. You don't even have to remember these. You just need to know what they stand for. Then you've got your roof details at the bottom with very clear dimensions. And remember, this is a scale drawing, so you have to use the dimensions given. You can't just estimate it. Make sure you know what all these different components mean. You've got your incomplete foundation detail. Again, look at all this information. You need to make use of it. You've got your fixtures. And of course, these are the detail views. You're going to use the sun symbols when actually drawing this. You've got your roof components there, wall plate, ridge cover, roof cap, gutters, fascia boards, all of this important information. Then you've got your door and window schedule. Um, and they actually show you these A's and B's. What does that mean? That means where's the opening side? Where's the hinge side? Okay. And which panels are sick, fixed? There you see the C. All frames 50 millimeters, fiber cement, sills under all. And this a lot of times learners miss out. Is this still? I'm going to show you that in a moment. All right. Then in the question, make sure you understand. I use this as my checklist. All right. Because what is, do they say? They say com the, complete the floor plan. What? You have to add all doors and windows. If I added all of them, I tick it. All fixtures. In other words, the, those indicated by abbreviations, check it. All electrical fittings. As you do them, check it so that you do not miss anything here. And then again, um, you have to label each view. The south elevation, the room designations, and floor finishes, ground level, finish floor level. This is again a checklist. Please do not skip over this. They do not put any information on these papers. That's not relevant and for you to use. Okay. Then you're going to page over and you're going to get to the actual question page. Okay. Now they're starting you off with some critical information. First of all, your incomplete floor plan. And they've left space here for your windows and your doors. 
your etching and your fixtures. Okay. Secondly, there's going to be a space for your detailed section. And you see here, note the difference in scale. 1 to 20, the floor plan was 1 to 50. Okay. And they've given you a lot of space here with actually another end, the actual cutting plane. Okay. So it's not going to be a full section. It's just this partial section here. Okay. So you're going to see, you're going to cut through this wall and you will see this door at the back and you'll end round about here with that. Uh, section line um, break linings okay and then your south east elevation is going to be projected upwards and you're going to actually use these walls and the placement of the doors etc to project that upward okay then another thing that's important is if you look at what the mark allocation is this is where you're going to be marking your roof um, you're going to can be penalized for incorrect scale non-alignment of views views rotated incorrectly section incorrectly etc okay and then your checklist here and make sure you you have an answer on this page for each one of these and you can see the weight of these um there's quite significant marks here for electrical doors and windows etc okay but it's no use adding a door and window and not adding it correct so we need to see the memo let me do that for you let me reveal the memo for specifically the floor plan. Okay, let's start with the first one, the windows and the doors. Here you, can, here you can see what do they give marks for. Detail of mark allocation for a window, okay. So we've got two, uh, four half marks, which makes a total of two, okay. What do they check? They check that the wall lines meet, okay. Then they check that your window is in the middle of this wall, okay. So remember, there's your hatching. They haven't drawn it, okay? They check that these lines are in the middle, and they check the windowsill. If you look at the actual part here, they used to have it. The back of it, two lines for your center, and this is going to be 50 millimeters, and then uh, your windowsill, okay? Then, here's a catch. This distance that's allocated for your window is bigger than your actual window. So you have to go, and you have to use your measurement that they've given here, 1,300, and go and measure it in this gap, and you'll actually find that they normally short on the edges. I'll just do it for free and here for the sake of time. But they're short, so they check, the guy marking you, your work here checks whether you filled in that line there on the end. So please do not miss that. That is key for you to get your marks. Here you can see the two marks on the sides. Okay, then we move over to your door. They double check the two, two actual the lines for that door and that arc must be drawn neatly. Let's look at them here, okay? So there it is. Make sure, see how it's hinged there on this corner that they check and then exactly where that line ends, all right? For that door and the opening, all right? Then the window I did speak about, the hatching. Ladies and gentlemen, what I do to tell my learners is do two lines close to each other and then have a nice substantial gap, another two lines, a gap again. Why? because you're saving time, okay? You do not have to have these lines too close to each other. Make sure they spread out so that you actually um, don't waste time with putting them too close to each other and it takes a lot of time. All right, then your electrical fittings. Make sure you know your symbols. These lines have a French curve and you draw them quickly. It looks still neat and it's quicker than trying to draw them by hand and letting them look neat. Although, remember, you won't lose marks for untidy work. The most important is that you get these in and then you get the marks. Right, each bedroom they ask for the labeling of the room plus the floor finish. Mate, don't forget to add that. Um, the built in cupboard and then the fixtures. How do I know where do I get a toilet or a bath, etc.? If you look here on the actual question, it's shown you WC. You, of course, need to know that means toilet. B is your uh, bath, WB is your basin. And I'll just look at that layout here. And you can see basin, bath, toilet, same with the kitchen. Please, never at your basin have these three lines. That is incorrect. You will be penalized. This is wrong, okay? It's just those outlines with the basin and the outlet, okay? And there's two, four. There's quite a number of marks going there. Uh, label all your electrical acid. And then here's another catch. As you exit, every exit must have a closed line here. It's not in the actual question. You need to remember to put that in. The same on this side to uh, fill out that step area. There, number two is, of course, the DB. That's one that the learners sometimes forget. Um, 
Number seven here, if you look there, distribution board. Okay, look at that placement. And that is just there. It's this one here. That's the DB. A lot of learners forget that. I'll make a note of that. You see how that is indicated. Okay, that's your floor plan. You're going to then project straight up. And you are going to draw your elevation. Okay, let's look at what the elevation requires of you. Okay, so your door frames must be double lines all around. There's your step, that line that I spoke to just. Your window, you need to show the actual insides, and it's these lines that you use for that, plus the handle when you open this window. There's your fixed panel, your windowsill. All of these are marks, ladies and gentlemen. Then you've got your pillars coming down. You've got your finished floor level line. Look at the kind of line that you're using. Your natural ground level line, that needs to go past these ends. All right, don't stop at the end of the house. It needs to go past it. All the way through, ground line, clearly indicated. Your gully, your rainwater downpipe. Then they check on your roof detail. Do we see the fascia and do we see the gutter? You see, it's four lines. Make sure you get all four lines in. And then as this gutter runs around the house, okay, it's also going to extrude here on this end. You have your roof ridge all the way through double lines. Make sure you get all of that in. If it was a side view, you would have added barge boards, depending on the roof design, of course. Okay, that is on your elevation. Then on this specific um, question, so you had your floor plan, you complete this first. Then you project up, you get your elevation. Then you check the cutting plane and you check your scale, 1 to 20. And this year, this area here, is where you're going to use this information. They didn't give it to you by chance. It's there for a reason. It's this that you now need to draw, 1 to 20. And here's my tip. It says 600 here. How do I know what that gets to scale 1 to 20? The easiest is, each one of these measurements, you divide. So you say 600, and you divide it by whatever this is. 20, so you divide it by 20, and that is 30. So... The size of your base will be, of your foundation, is 30 millimeters. That is 600 in scale 1 to 20, okay? Maybe the, some of you for the first time understand scale here. That is 30, but it is actually 600, all right? The height is 200. So we're just going to go 200 divided by 20. That gives me 10, okay? So the height here is 10. You see how I start this drawing? And you're going to do that with all the measurements, okay? I'm not using, in the center here, it's again 200, so get the center, I know that's 10. You're going to go up from here, and I'm using the measurements that's given here, okay? The height from the bottom to the top is 420, so I divide that by 20. It's going to be 21, I think, roughly, all right? Make a mark. That is my ground level. Draw that line in with confidence. Then we add 400, divide by 20, that's 20. Okay, that's the bottom of my foundation, a floor. That's going to be 100 divided by 20. It's going to be 5. Okay. Sorry, that line shouldn't be there, but you have your concrete going in there. All right, then you have your finished floor level going in here. You've got your different kinds of hatching. Okay. First, your compact fill. Sorry, it's going to be nice and big compact fill. There's your undisturbed ground. And hatching again here. And your damp proof course, DPC, natural ground level. Okay, so that's how you start this door. I'm just quickly showing the start of this, okay? But you're using the measurements that was given to you. All right, then you go all the way up to the roof, and then you're going to be start using these information. Let's look at the actual memo. Just flip that. Let's start from the beginning. There you can see the foundation, the underbuilt, Damp proof course, labeled correctly, compact fill like I showed you, natural undisturbed ground, you've got your floor finishing, you've got your actual door frame that you see here. Remember this door frame is the one that if I'm sectioning here, I'm looking in the direction of the arrows, it's that door there that I see, okay. I've got my door frame, got my wall up, there's no window in this case, but they've got a lot of details required for the roof. So make sure again here, you've got the correct size for your purlins. Wall plate is correct. This distance is 38, 38 by 38, 114 by 38. You've got your roof overhang, your fascia, your gutter. There's no downpipe on this side. You've got your battens and your roof sheeting. Okay, and then your actual truss design. And all of this, you're going to get 
from the information sheet here. There you get it, plus this information. All right, so that's going to be your roof design. Put all of these together onto that answer and you'll absolutely nail it. Double check afterwards that you've gotten all the hatching done. That's it. That is a quick overview of your civil. We're going to stop here and we're going to go over to paper 2, mechanical analytics, and we'll run you through all the questions you can expect in paper 2. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Cheers.